welcome, welcome to this Meetup Live event. I am so excited to be here. Um, we're doing this event in celebration of Mental Health Awareness Month, which is something that's very important to me. And I am so excited to say that we're joined by a very special guest, Rosie Acosta. Acosta, sorry, author, inspirational speaker, and yoga instructor. Um, she is joining us today for a guided meditation focused on breath work. During this hour-long demo, you will learn about mindfulness techniques for cultivating calm, joy, and presence. And you'll also get to hear about the benefits <clears throat> of regular mindf mindfulness and meditation exercises. Before we get started, I'm going to go over some housekeeping. So this event will be recorded. If you have to leave earlier, if you want to watch it again, don't worry, we got you covered. You can watch a recap of this event on our YouTube channel or on our blog at meetup.com slash blog. Just keep in mind that it won't be available until early next week. Um, and the only people that you will see on camera is Rosie and myself. You will not appear on video, so don't worry. Also, everyone is muted. Uh, it's a mute courtesy from Zoom. And if you have any questions, which we encourage you to ask them, please do submit them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. The chat will be turned off shortly. So if you have questions, again, please submit them in the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And also a great feature that comes with Zoom is closed captioning. Uh, if you'd like to turn it on, just click on the live transcription icon at the bottom of the screen and you can select your preference. So uh, I just did some opening remarks and went over some housekeeping. I'm going to briefly introduce Rosie Acosta, and then she is going to take over for the meditation demo. And then I will come back on the screen and ask some of the questions that y'all shared in the Q&A uh, feature. So without further ado, this is my introduction to Rosie. Yay. Rosie Acosta is the author of, you are the author of, I'm so excited that I can barely talk. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Um, author of You Are Radically Loved, A Healing Journey to Self-Love. Rosie has studied yoga and mindfulness for more than 20 years and taught for over a decade. A decade. She hosts a weekly conversational wellness podcast called Radically Loved. Rosie has traveled all over the world leading workshops, retreats, and yoga teacher training. She works with a wide range of students from those in her East Los Angeles community to Olympic athletes, NFL champions, <laughs> NBA all-stars, and veterans of war. A first-generation Mexican-American, Rosie's mission is to help others overcome adversity and experience radical love. I love that. I am on that mission with you because I am an Afro-Latina woman from Dominican Republic. <clears throat> She's been featured in Yoga Journal, Well and Good, Forbes, The New York Post, just to name a few. And she currently, she said this earlier, she currently resides in the greater Los Angeles <laughs> region, also known as the, say it, Rosie. The, the Valley. Valley. Where it's very warm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to go off the screen now so that Rosie can take it over and I will be back in a bit. Yay. Thank you so much, Janine. And thank you all so much for being here. I'm so excited. This is my favorite thing to do. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. And I know a lot of you, well, some of you had messaged me on Instagram asking questions already, and hopefully we can get through as many questions as we can at the end of the demo. So today we are going to talk about meditation, mindfulness. Uh, we're going to talk about breath work. We're going to talk about self-love and how all of these different modalities come into this beautiful tapestry that can create a better life for all of us, which I think is really nice for us to utilize these techniques because who doesn't want a more connected and fulfilled life? So that being said, again, I'm, I'm so happy to be here and to be guiding you through this experience. So I'll start with a little bit of background. Some of you may or may not know, uh, as Janine said, yes, I grew up, um, well, I'm from East LA originally. I grew up in a really chaotic environment, uh, lots of gang violence. There was, you know, drive-by shootings and, um, you know, just a, a really intense um, surroundings. And being in that environment for many years as a child created this PTSD experience that I had as I got older. When I became a teenager, I began suffering from these 
uh, really bad panic attacks and agoraphobia. Basically, I was paralyzed by fear. I was unable to leave my house, obviously for good reason, because I was in fear for my life. And it was one of these experiences that my family and friends didn't understand because everybody was going through the same thing. So everybody was in this collective experience of PTSD. And so during this time, I was trying to figure out how to navigate this experience. And I started to really make the wrong choices. I started to turn to drinking and drugs, and it really created the grounds for bad decisions as you might guess. <laughs> so when I was about 15 or 16 years old, I got arrested for um, trying to, those of you that have read my book know what I did. And I'll briefly say, it. don't want to dwell on it too much because we're talking about meditation and mindfulness, but I got arrested for trying to steal a cop car. And that really was the catalyst to changing my life because I needed to start making different decisions. Uh, I didn't want to be another statistic. I had grown up around a lot of people who had made bad choices and I wanted to prove the system wrong. And so during this time, my a friend of my mom's had come home with a pamphlet of sorts uh, talking about meditation and how it was really good for anxiety and stress. And I ended up taking that parrot and going through that journey and following that, those breadcrumbs. And when I discovered meditation and yoga during this time, it was one of the most profound experiences because up until that point, I hadn't felt what it was like to be in my body. I had spent so much of my early years being disembodied, not really being present. And so when I went to that first meditation class, it completely changed my life. And it wasn't this, I like to add a little disclaimer. It wasn't this ecstatic, incredible vision of experience that I had where the sort of, uh, all of the mysteries of the world revealed themselves. It was simply just being in a state of equilibrium, in a state of homeostasis. My body was just relaxed as I was breathing. And that was completely foreign to me. So using that, following that thread, learning more about meditation, getting into mindfulness, deciding that I wanted to create this better life for myself. I started to take trainings and workshops and my life completely turned around. Fast forward to uh, five or six years later, I decided that my life had changed so much. I wanted to bring these teachings to people like myself, people that had been in an underprivileged situation that could really benefit from these practices. People like my family, people like uh, a lot of immigrant families that were in our neighborhood. And so I wanted to find a way to make mindfulness accessible for everyone. And so that's what led to where I am now. I've been able to really focus on building that content. I created Radically Loved and I created a podcast and I wrote a book called You Are Radically Loved, A Healing Journey to Self-Love using all of these different modalities. So I don't want to bore you too much with my experience. I want to get into your experience. I want you to learn the tools that helped me and the tools that I like to teach people so that they can really gain the benefits of practicing mindfulness. So that being said, that's a little bit of background on me. And what I will say is that whether you're new to meditation or you've been meditating for a long time, we all suffer with the same amount of mind chatter. The mind is a computer. It goes and it goes and it goes. And we have about 50,000 thoughts per day. 90% of those thoughts are the same thing. So 
how do we begin to utilize the knowledge that we have to create more presence in our life, to create more joy, to cultivate more calm. So that's what we're going to do today. So that's the overview. I'm going to share my screen so that I can share some slides that I created just to keep, just to keep me organized guys, because if I don't, then, you know, I just, I can start just chatting away and we're going to be here forever. And I want to be respectful of your time. So here's what we're going to focus on today. So the introduction to mindfulness, some of you may or may not know this. Mindfulness is really our ability to be present. It's our ability to be aware of what our surroundings are, to be very methodical and very intentional. And although it sounds very easy to do, I'm curious how many people out here watching this, or if you're watching this later on, how many of you really feel like you're present in everything that you do? Feel free to answer in the chat. You can say, I feel like I'm present a lot of the time, or just you can say, no, sometimes or most of the time, I don't feel like I'm present. So the reason why this is so important for us is because our mind is constantly either thinking about the past or projecting into the future. And so one of the ways to be in this present moment is to learn what that means for us, right? So learning these different types of techniques that can help us really create more of that presence. So what we're going to go through today, we're going to talk about breath awareness, body scan, loving kindness, meditation, gratitude practice, and mindful movement. So if I'm giving you just basic tips on how to practice mindfulness, these would be the five tips that I would give to you. I would say, focus on your breath because when we focus on our breath, think about when you're really, even right now, the moments when we're really tense, we're not breathing. Our shoulders are in our ears. We have shoulder earrings. I call them, you know, we have shoulder earrings. Our breath is up here in our collarbones and we're not able to really take a full breath. So even if you just relax your shoulders, take a deep breath in, nice long exhale, relax your shoulders, relax your throat, relax the muscles of your face. Even that if you notice, creates this grounding energy, right? When we're on our computers or on our machines, or if we're doing things, if we're locked in our minds and we're just thinking about the next thing, your focus isn't on breath awareness. It's focused on the next, the next task, what's happening next, right? So noting that observing when those moments are, it could be as simple as a couple of times a day. It doesn't have to be every second of the day, but perhaps it's in the morning before you start answering emails, breath awareness, notice your breath. One of my teachers said this to me. And at the time I didn't really get it, but after a couple of years, it made a lot of sense. He said, when you master your breath, you can master your life. And I think about that, especially in moments when I'm being or feeling really reactive. Somebody does something, somebody wrongs you in some way, somebody says something upsetting to you, something doesn't go the way you want it to go. Notice your breath. Notice how the inclination is to stop breathing. So just something to note. The next is a body scan. And this is also one of my favorite ways to practice mindfulness is to just tune into how my body feels. When I would get these, these bouts of anxiety, I remember a therapist at one time said to me, one of the best grounding techniques that you can do is to scan your body. Because when we're in an excited state, we're not thinking about our body. We're thinking about what we're thinking. We're in that habitual pattern of some negative thought. It's, it's habitual for us. It's the neurological pathway that is most familiar. So if you can take a moment to scan your body, 
from the top of your head down to the toes of your toes, the toes of your feet, I was going to say, um, from top to bottom. And you just take a moment to observe. Now I'm taking you through these tips really quickly. We will be doing a practice here shortly, but I want you to just grasp these concepts in a way that are very basic and easy to do. So they don't really require you to sit down, cross your legs, set 20 minutes aside. I want you to just begin to think of these mindfulness techniques as things that you can actually incorporate into your routine that you already have. So even now you can keep your eyes open. Just take, take a just quick beat from the crown and just slowly start to scan down almost like if you're pouring light or a, a tiny bucket of honey on yourself. Just a slow scan from the head down to your throat, your shoulders, your chest, move it all the way down to your hips, legs, knees, calves, heels, toes. So even doing that very briefly, I'm curious, those of you that are going through this practice, if you notice a difference, what do you notice? One of the biggest things to observe when you're doing any practice like this meditation, breath work, self-love is to, to observe the differences, right? If you noticed anything, write it down or just take note, like that was really grounding or that was really uncomfortable for me. That was a little bit agitating for me. Everything is valid, right? All our experiences are valid. They're our experience. It's part of our practice to really get to know what is most familiar to us and what we can do to be begin to create a new neurological pathway. So the third thing is loving kindness. So loving kindness is a very prevalent practice um, especially in the world of mindfulness, it's a practice that we do. Uh, we're sending love and kindness to the other, right? Especially if you're very reactive, I can spend an entire workshop with you all just on loving kindness. Maybe that's our next meetup because I feel like just a quick mention of it doesn't do it justice to me. It's been one of the most powerful practices, especially in light of 2020 and what we've gone through in the last three years. Um, also a great practice. If you have activating in-laws or if you have activating family members or activating friends is to really invite everybody involved to send love and kindness. And it, it's a very simple technique. You can do it as a meditation, or you can just do it as I'm a visual person, so it depends whether you're an auditory, a visual, a, a kinesthetic uh, experience person. Uh, I like to visualize it as like a lotus flower from my heart and giving it to the other person's heart. So let's say, for example, my neighbor is activating me for some reason. And I just, I, I visualize them and I send them a Lotus flower from my heart to theirs. And I just wish them loving kindness. I know that they didn't mean to snap at me because I was parking in their space by like two inches. I know that they're really going through a difficult time. Being human is hard. Can we not all agree that sometimes being human is very difficult? So that's how I utilize loving kindness in a very practical way. The fourth thing is gratitude, which I know is a, is a very, um, almost a little bit overused type of practice because this is where I'm going to throw a little wrench in the system. I, I love when people have the attitude of gratitude. I think it's great. I'm a realist. Don't forget where I came from and where I grew up. I know the struggles of life. And I know it's really difficult sometimes to be in a place of gratitude, especially if you're going through something really difficult in your life, or if you've gone through something very difficult in your life. So I think for me, the best way to practice gratitude, I love nature. 
And if I'm surrounded by any type of greenery, it could be a little succulent here on my desk. It could be looking outside and seeing a tree. It could be going to the ocean. I try to, I try to uh, broach gratitude in a very broad way. So for me, I like to go um, from the macro into the micro. So I think I love the ocean. I love animals. I love nature. I love trees. I love the grass. And then I can go into micro. I'm really grateful that, you know, I I have a good relationships with my parents. That wasn't always the case. I'm really grateful that I have loving and supportive friends and so on. So for me, again, practical way to practice uh, gratitude. I think again, whatever works for you is what works for you because these practices, and and I'll tell you once I'm done giving you the spiel is they're not one size fits all. I think a lot of the times we think mindfulness practice needs to look a certain way and it doesn't, I think it's different for different people. And we'll, I'll put a little pin in that and I'll come back to that. And the last thing is mindful movement. So for me, movement is key. When I, when I go for a walk or I go for a run or I do a yoga class or I just, yeah, just go for a walk. When I move my body, aside from it releasing the feel good hormones, it really allows me to integrate all of these other practices. When I'm walking or if I'm using my body in some way, I'm aware of my breath. I can do my body scan. I can feel my body. I can practice loving kindness. I can practice gratitude. So this is my way of integrating all of the mindfulness practice. Now, by saying that, I will say mindfulness practice looks different for everyone. I don't want you to think that mindfulness or meditation needs to happen when you're sitting again and you're allocating that time. Yes, it's a yes and yes and your meditation and mindfulness can also be doing the dishes. It can be putting away laundry. It could be running errands. It could be taking your pet for a walk. It could be simply just going and catching some sun rays on your front porch. So really understand that these different practices only can integrate when we feel a connection to them. Um, And it takes time. So that being said, a lot of us may or may not know the benefits of meditation. Obviously it helps reduce stress and anxiety and depression, and it can improve our focus, increase self-awareness and enhance our overall well-being. Um, so all of that to say that when we begin to find what works for us, it will become easier to integrate into again, our daily routine. So I shared those fun tips with you all. And now what I want to say is how do we actually integrate those practices into our everyday life? And as I said, meditation, mindfulness practice can be you doing what you normally do. It's like without getting too esoteric, how do we make the mundane sacred, right? And this is where, to me, these types of practices really come to life. Because when you think about something that is mundane, something that you do every day, something that you don't think of it as being sacred, how do you, how do you make that sacred? How do you, how do you create the experience of ritual into your life? Going and getting, you know, on your computer in the morning or when you're answering emails or when you're making your coffee. To me, those are the most profound practices. If you're a caffeine drinker, I don't drink coffee. I'm a green tea, tea, matcha person, but I utilize that morning time to really make that habitual task more meaningful to me. And it's just taking that 
those small seconds of engaging all of my senses to just do a simple task, like sipping my matcha or sipping my tea, or for you, it might be sipping your coffee. Just take one second, two seconds to just appreciate that experience. One of the things that I think about often is every moment is a completely new experience. This moment in time, all of us here, thousands of people together will never happen again in this exact way. We're all gathered here together. We're all meeting up together. This moment is different than this moment and this moment and so on. Even though we might proceed our day and our routines without that awareness, I think, again, that's part of our mindfulness practice that we can bring into uh, everything that we do. Okay, so without me going too much on a tangent, uh, let's continue. So what I'd like to do now is I will guide us through a short meditation. Uh, we're going to do some breath work. Um, but one of the things that I want to ask you all to do is I want you to take note of how you feel right now. Just note, because when we start to notice the difference between now and later is how we begin to integrate these practices. Like we really get to embed them into our cellular makeup. Because if I notice right now, I'm a little bit mm, agitated or I'm a little anxious or I'm really chill right now, whatever it may be, when you start to notice, okay, this is how I feel right now. I'm sorry, I bumped to this. This is how I feel right now. I'm going to do this practice and I want to notice. So the way I like to do it and what I'll ask you to do is how do you feel on a scale from one to 10? One being super low energy, not happy, kind of a little blah, not really into anything at the moment. And 10 being, I'm so excited. I'm so happy right now. I'm overfilled with joy. There's nothing that any that can happen that's going to just take me outside of feeling this ecstasy. Okay, so just rate it from one to 10, how you feel right now. And, and feel free to put it in the chat if you like to. I'll give you a, a, a beat to do that. Take a minute or not a minute, just a few few moments. Okay. Okay, great. So noticing, let's get started. So find a comfortable position. If you're sitting, you can lay down if you want. Just find a comfortable position so that you're not going to be disturbed. Take a few moments, roll your shoulders up and back. If you're sitting, sit up nice and tall. See if you can get the crown of your head right above the base of your spine. You can lean against the wall, just find whatever is most comfortable for you. Good, and we'll just take a few moments just to arrive into this moment. Good, relax your throat, relax the muscles of your face. Arriving, observing. If it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, you can begin to close your eyes. If not, you can keep your eyes open with a soft gaze. We'll begin by doing just a few clearing breaths. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Good, let's do that again. Big deep breath in through the nose. Open your mouth, exhale. Good, one more time. Big deep breath, inhale. Open your mouth, exhale. Good, observing where you are. Tuning in to all of your senses. Relax your jaw, the muscles of your face. Relax your throat, your shoulders.
observing any fluctuation of mind, any busyness of thought. And so without judgment, just observing. As your body begins to settle in, imagine your thoughts like slow moving clouds in the sky. Imagine that these clouds slowly begin to move slower. As they slow down, the mind begins to quiet. Bring your attention and your awareness to your breath, to your breathing. And without judging, just noticing. Just begin to observe if your breathing is short and shallow, or if it's deep and long. I'll invite you now to begin to deepen your breath. Still shoulders relaxing, throat is relaxed. Keep the chin level to the floor so you're not tilting too far back or too far forward. Now, as we begin our breath work, continue to observe the body. And if at any point this breathing technique feels agitating, just come back to the breath normally, however you would normally breathe relaxing your body as best you can. So we're going to begin to breathe in for four counts. This is a one to two breath ratio breath work. We're gonna inhale for four counts, hold for a moment, and then we're gonna exhale for six counts. And I'm gonna count. So we'll begin, take a few moments again, settle in, begin to inhale for one, two, three, four, pause, exhale six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale one, two, three, four, pause, exhale six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, pause. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, hold for two. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, pause for two, exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Do two more on your own at your own pace. Good. Now releasing the technique, just letting it go, tuning back into the body and the breath, observing what is present. Relax your throat, your shoulders, the muscles of your face. Notice if the mind has wandered, simply return it back to your breath, easy breathing. Good. 
I want you to begin to imagine your breath like a slow moving wave. As you inhale, see the wave move into the body of water. And as you exhale, it smoothly ripples out to the shore. Breathe in, wave goes in. Breathe out, wave gently ripples out, releasing any tension. Just a few more times on your own. Good, now gently releasing that technique. Bring your mind, your awareness, your attention to the present moment. Bring your awareness to the center of your chest and begin to see, feel, or sense a big sun, a radiant sun at the center of your chest. Imagine this radiant sun as the source of your vitality, your joy, your calm, your peace, your self-love. Big radiant sun at the center of your chest. See this big radiant sun begin to expand in every direction creating a sphere of light around you, around your entire body, your entire being. Almost as if you're sitting in a sphere of light. Allow this light to burn away anything that doesn't belong, any doubt, any worry, any insecurity. Just resting in the sphere of light. Bring your awareness back to the center of your chest and begin to bring to mind something or someone that you're grateful for. Think of something or someone that you're truly grateful for. Something or someone that you're truly grateful for. And from that place at the center of your chest, Send them that love or that gratitude to that place, thing, or person from the center of your chest to their center. Bring your attention, your awareness back to your body and back to your breath. And to complete our journey, our practice, when you're ready, gently begin to lower your chin, deepen your breath. Feel the ground underneath you, the sky above you, everything around you. When you're ready, slowly begin to blink your eyes open. Look on the floor, take in your space. Take in all of your surroundings. Good. And just take a few moments to come back to the space. Some deep breaths, maybe a nice stretch. And I want you to just notice, just notice 
if you can gauge how you feel now on a scale from one to 10, just notice, just take note. You can write it down. You can type it in the chat if you did earlier. Just notice if there's been a shift, even a slight shift. Great. Nice. So that practice was 10 minutes. And typically you can do the same type of practice in a shorter amount of time, five minutes. Shorten the breathing exercise, go into your loving sphere and allow yourself to be in the present moment and utilize that as your meditation practice. Um, one of the best ways that I love to practice self-love is to practice present moment awareness, to practice self-compassion. And one of the things that I hear a lot when I'm teaching workshops or I'm working with people one-on-one -on -one or anytime I'm leading a training, um, people always say to me, uh, I can't, my mind is too busy or I'm doing it wrong. Or it just makes me think of how unhappy I am and so on. And one of the gifts of mindfulness is our ability to be present with the uncertainty and to be present with what is, right? So we can't change what we can't change. And if we allow ourselves the space and the compassion to say, you know what, you showed up and you did it and you're here and you showed up here with us for this hour and hopefully it served you in some way, but you took that initiative. So all of you here are dedicated and committed to connecting more to that essence of what you are. And so I, I think it's really important for us to be able to practice that. Hi. So it seems like Rosie froze. We'll get her right back. Give us a second. Sorry, please bear with us. Okay, it seems like we lost Rosie. Hopefully we'll get her back shortly. Please just bear with us in the meantime. We're trying to get her back. We apologize for this inconvenience. Oh, her power went out. Okay, she's gonna try to get back on. Her power went out. Um, for some folks that asked if they can watch a recording or a recap of this event, we absolutely can. Um, the recording will be on YouTube and we will also have the recording and a recap of this event on our blog at meetup.com slash blog. Just keep in mind that it won't be available until early next week. Um, and I guess while Rosie is getting her power back on, her power went out, um, we do have a few slides that we wanted to share. So I can go ahead and share that now while we wait for Rosie. So the first one is I wanted to say um, that Mita created a mental health resource page. Um, for anyone that is in need of some of the resources. Uh, this page will help you feel more centered um, all year round. You can either scan the QR code that is on the screen, or you can just click on the link that we're sharing in the chat. 
and there it is. Also, Meetup is on TikTok in case you didn't know. Yeah, so you can go ahead and follow us on TikTok at Meetup um, and you can check out all of the fun and engaging content that we have uh, on TikTok. And again, like I said, for those of you, if you came late or if you want to rewatch this video, you can, you can watch the recording on our blog um, at meetup.com slash blog, okay. She says she's sorry, let me see if she's able to come back on. So sorry about that, everyone. I guess this happens, the power goes out. We'll give her two minutes. If she doesn't come back on, I guess something that we can do is we can share the most common asked questions and have Rosie give us responses to those questions and we can then share them in the blog recap. Just to make sure that we do get a chance to answer some of your questions. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, friends. Oh, at least it happened at the end of the, I don't know where I got frozen, everyone. I'm so sorry. We had a power outage. It's okay. I guess it happens. Um, okay. So I guess what we can do is, Rosie, we can go straight into the questions. We have about yeah. 11 minutes, so we can go into some of Great. the questions from the audience. Actually, before we do that, let's share a slide on your book so that the audience knows mm about your book, where they can find it. And then we're also gonna share links in the chat on how they can stay in touch with you. So go Great. ahead, Rosie, tell them about your book, please. Yeah, apologies again, my friends. Of course, it's inevitable, right? Um, so my book came out last year, February 2, 2222. It's called You Are Radically Loved, A Healing Journey to Self-Love. And yeah, it's a book, basically, I talk about my experience, a little bit of what I shared with all of you earlier. Uh, my journey to navigating growing up in East LA and how I utilize mindfulness and meditation and yoga to help me get on my healing journey. And I talk about different ways to um, practice self-love and yeah. And I narrate it. If you are an auditory person, you can check it out on audible. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun read. I've had such a great, we've done book clubs and uh, I'm about to actually do another You Are Radically Loved workshop here soon. So yeah, thank you. Please check it out. Support female authors, my friends. Um, and also we shared the links in the chat on how you can stay in touch with all the great things that Rosie has going on. All right, so we're going to jump into the questions. Okay, so Riley asked, how would you suggest staying present in mindfulness? Was that me? Sorry about that. How would you suggest staying present in mindfulness? I have it as a practice, but I want to be more present in the activities. Oh, yeah, in activities. So I think it's it's a moment by moment type of experience. It really setting the intention is the key. Um, it's it's difficult to be present. I mean, we can all agree on this, right? To be able to just be in the present moment with everything that's happening. So I suggest allowing yourself to do some of the tips that were in the slides that I was sharing, be aware of your breath, allow yourself to um, really take in what's happening. One of the, not tricks, but one of the habits that I like to do is I like to just be really aware of colors. Like I notice what colors are around. Uh, I ground myself. It's a really great grounding technique also if you're ever having a panic attack. So that that's what I would suggest for that. Thank you, Rosie. So I have to say a lot of these techniques when I was listening to you and even this now with the grounding and the colors, these are things that I actually try with my therapist and they really, yeah, the grounding techniques, they really, really do work. Yeah. How do you, when are moments, if you're in a public space, are you able to still practice these techniques? Yes, I am. Okay. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, I have one that works a lot for me is using your five senses and finding like five different things with, you know, utilizing your senses, right? Like for example, five things that you see, you know, or whatever it is, like five to taste or smells or hear sounds that you hear. Um, but that definitely helps because it takes you out of your head and you have to, you know, you kind of go into your surroundings yeah. and that always helps ground me. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same. And I love this technique. So I would definitely recommend that. I mean, if we, you can take that technique with everything that you do, you know, when I was talking about the making the mundane sacred, you know, it's really about engaging all of the senses and allowing yourself to be in the full experience of, of what you're doing. It's incredible how it works. Yeah. Um, okay. Anonymous asks, I deal with a lot of chronic pain. When I do the body scan, I experience it as uncomfortable. Any thoughts about that? Yes. Uh, there is this uh, practice uh, called uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction. And it is all about being able to reduce stress. Janine, we've talked about this uh, a little bit. And <laughs> it's really about some of these techniques are really about bringing your attention to the source of that pain or hurt. And it's very difficult. And I highly recommend that you try this technique with somebody who's experienced and has done it for a long time, because it can be very activating. Um, but there are, so, there are ways to manage that. And in fact, there have been scientific uh, studies that have shown how MBSR helps reduce stress and helps deal and manage chronic pain. So I would highly recommend looking into that um, because I, I work with a lot of clients that have cr chronic illnesses and the, these are the methods that we use in order to really um, be able to sit and do a, a stillness or a breathing type of practice. Thank you, Rosie. Yeah. Richard, I'm going to say the name wrong and I'm so sorry. Obring, Obringer asked, what are your suggestions for eliminating distractions or other external noise such as TV and social media? Oh my goodness. How much time do we have? Um, do you have six minutes? Oh <laughs> so okay, like one Richard. minute for this one. <laughs> hey, Richard, um, first of all, I would say, look, me picking this up is a conscious task. Me turning on the TV, it doesn't turn on itself. It doesn't use itself. I am actively participating in its activation. So it's very difficult to be able to tune it out. I like to take media breaks where I disconnect from social media for a couple of weeks, <laughs> days, weeks, and I like to just give myself the space because it is a lot of information and our brains aren't built to withstand so much. We're not computer. I mean, our mind is a computer, but we're not a machine, right? So give yourself breaks. One of the big things I like to tell people is don't start off your day with technology, which I know is really difficult for a lot of you because the first thing you do is maybe you reach for that phone or it's your alarm or whatever. I would get an old school alarm clock if that is you. I have a clock next to my bed. My phone goes into my office space. I don't see it after six o'clock. It's gonna, it could wait until the next day. Um, I, I just really try my best to minimize notifications on my phone. No, no notifications are on. Um, I would do little things like this that you can incorporate so that it's not so overwhelming for you, because there's also been studies that have shown how notifications really create, uh, uh anxiety and stress. So I would really work everybody here on minimizing, uh, the notifications, somebody poking at you, like, think about it. It's like a bunch of people, like everybody's poking at you at the same time. So that's, that's what I rec would recommend. Thank that. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Anonymous asked, could Rosie talk a bit more about self-compassion and self-love and how to attain those, including self-forgiveness that, oh my gosh. I mean, I'm just like all three are just like so difficult, Yeah, but they are attainable. You know, 
our mind. I saw this meme one time where it was like these two little caricatures going into the cave of the mind and how going into the mind, you should never go alone. You always go with the friend. <laughs> and I thought that was so, so cute and very true, right? Sometimes we are our own uh, worst enemy, worst enemy. I don't want to say enemy, but we're our own. Um, yeah. Like we, we perpetuate those, those cycles of anxiety and, and negativity and it goes back to, I'm not going to bring up this topic, but the topic we were talking about earlier, Janine, about like um, how we see our bodies, how we treat ourselves. And for me, self-love, self-compassion, and, and truly, and I'm not trying to, there's a section in my, there's two chapters dedicated just to this towards the end. So if you don't want to read it, don't just read like the last two chapters. Um, Cause I really go into depth on how, important it is for us to practice self-compassion because think about how often in a day we'll go around and we'll ask people how they're doing, but how often do you sit and ask yourself, how are you today? Self like do it right now. Like everybody, all of us, like internally ask yourself, like, how are you today? Right. I mean, that to me can bring me to tears some days because we forget about this us and i think if we operate from this place of self awareness self compassion and we put that first it can really allow us the space for the others to begin to take root and it's a practice um it's a practice just like everything else you know i i think we can do a, a full other I mean, I do retreats on this and even in a week, I can't get all of the information, uh, transmitted things that I've learned, you know, I've really struggled in my life with self-love, self-compassion because of the way that I grew up, you know, and I was a teenager, I was really overweight and I was on medication for anxiety and depression. And I was really unhappy. And as an early 20 year old, I developed an eating disorder. And so I've done a lot of work, a lot of work with a therapist on this topic. And really it's the basis of you are radically loved. You know, you teach what you need to learn. And so for me, it's, it's been a great, one of the greatest lessons of my life. And so, and it's with great humility that I give you this advice or suggestion. So really try to try to make even just that little bit a uh, part of your routine. Thank you, Rosie. And thank you for whoever asked that really, really great and powerful question. Um, unfortunately, we are at time. I am so sorry. <laughs> Rosie, thank you so much for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you. I learned so much and I'm actually taking some advice from you. I am going for a walk right after this. I'm going to get my body moving. Thank you for everyone that joined us today. Again, if you'd like to stay in touch with Rosie or be a part of whatever it is that she's doing next, yeah. we shared her links in the chat and you can catch a recap and a recording of this event on our blog at meetup.com slash blog. And just a reminder that it will not be available on the blog until next week. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.